أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وهو الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بالحق and he is the one who Allah سبحانه وتعالى who created the heavens and the earth with truth what does it mean truth here means with a purpose this creation is not a purposeless creation ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار It is a serious creation of Allah سبحانه وتعالى who cannot do anything without any end, without any purpose. You can't think about a human being also. If he is a normal person that he can do anything without any purpose. So how can you imagine that Allah سبحانه وتعالى has created all in vain? No results will come out. Whether you are doing good or you are doing evil, it will be all the same, equal. No. You will have to face the results. وَالَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بِالْحَقِّ وَيَوْمَ يَقُولُ كُلْ فَيَكُولُ And the day he says, be, and it is done. قَوْلُهُ الْحَقِّ His word is the truth. What does it mean? Only his saying is decisive. He doesn't need anything, any means to accomplish something. Only his saying, Kun! And it becomes. That is the difference, you know. That there, is, there are some Hindu philosophies who say that even matter was eternally present forever. Because how could God create something without anything? God was there forever, and matter was also. Matter is also Qadeem. Paramatma bhi Qadeem, matter bhi Qadeem. No. Quran says He created everything out of nothingness. And that is called Ibda or Ijad. But then you know, He creates things from other things also. He created man out of clay. He created jinns out of fire. So these things are also interchanging, one creation to another. But he can create, and he created the, in the beginning from nothingness, which they call in philosophical terms ex nihilo, creation, creation ex nihilo, creation without anything which was existing prior, priorly. No. Qalul Haq, only his command that is decisive. We and it becomes. The whole mulk, and for him, is the kingdom and sovereignty. To him belongs the sovereignty and kingdom. Yawma yulfaqu fissur, and the day the trumpet will be blown, alim al ghaybi wa shahada, alim al ghaybi wa shahada. He is the knower of all that is unseen and seen. What is visible and what is invisible for you, he knows everything. Nothing is ghaib for him. This ghaib is only with respect to us. Everything is shahada for him. It's before his eyes. Everything. There's no ghaib for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But these words are used with respect to and with relation to human beings, creation. For, for us, something is shahada, something is ghaib. Something is visible, something is invisible. But for Allah, everything is visible. وَهُوَ الْحَكِيمُ الْخَبِيرُ And He is all-wise, all-knowing, aware of everything. وَإِسْقَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ لِيَبِيهِ آزَرَى And just recall, when Abraham said to his father, Azar, أَتَتَّخِذُ أَسْنَامًا آلِهَا 
What is it? Have you taken these idols as gods? In the Iraq of a common cathedral, oh father, I see you and your nation, your people, they are lost in absolute misguidance. These idols, you pray to them, you prostrate before them, you have yourself carved them out of this stone, and then you stand. You fold your hands before them. You prostrate before them. Ishqal Ibrahim ul Yabi Adra ta takhadu asnaman ila aleha. Inni araka wa qawma ka fi dalali mubin. Wa kazalika nuri Ibrahim malakuta samawati wa lard. And in the same way, we showed to Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wa salam, the working of the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. You know, there is a divine kingdom. And for this divine kingdom, universal kingdom, there is a bureaucracy also. The civil service of this kingdom is the angels who are enforcing divine commands. Only it is invisible. You have a kingdom here, you have a state and a statecraft and people are there who are looking after different aspects of it, managing it. So in the same way, all this universe is being governed and there is the management for so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows, as I told you, to prophets Allah discloses some of the ghayb. Otherwise they are just equal to other people. Some of the ghayb, you know, some of the unseen is shown to them. Kazalika nuri Ibrahim malakut as samawati wal nard. We show to Ibrahim malakut as samawati wal nard, the secrets. The secret working of the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. So that he becomes from among those who have full conviction. When you have to call other people to Allah, you must have full conviction with you. And because the prophets were sent to call people towards Allah, so they needed the strongest conviction. Without any iot of doubt. That is why we showed to them the secret working and management of this universe. Now, the, the ayat which are now coming following, is, they can be interpreted in two ways. And there's just possibility as we read the text, possibility of both. But you know, the second alternative is more preferable. One is that actually Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam passed through some stages during his intellectual development, he, he, stage one to stage two, and then to stage three, and then he reached Tawheed. Because, you know, he was born in a society which was worshipping idols, worshipping the stars, worshipping the king also. All three types of shirk were there. Namrud, he also claimed to be God, and people were, had accepted him. Then they used to, to, to worship the stars also. They are the idols also, all types of shirk prevalent over there. Now from that he rose up. So maybe that he went through an intellectual process and he rejected these things one by one and one by one and then he reached the top of Tawheed. And the second mode of expression, the second mode of exegesis is that actually it was an argument he made to convince others. Otherwise, you know, a Nabi can never be a mushrik, even his infancy. A Nabi is protected from the very beginning. So this is the second view. And I, you know, subscribe to this second view. But the wordings here, they can accommodate the first view also. فَلَمَّا جَنَّ عَلَيْهِ اللَّيْلِ When the night came to him and covered everything, رَا كَوْكَبًا He saw a star. Kala Hada Rabbi. He said, This is my Lord. A very shining star. Maybe it is my Lord. Falamma Afala. But when he said, Kala La Uhibul Afilin, he said, No, I can't love those who set. God cannot be cannot set. He is forever. Forever. So I can't accept. So maybe it was a stage in his intellectual, you know, evolution. But maybe it's only he's used these words as an argument. Look, people, 
Oh, maybe, maybe. As you think, this may be God. But when it said, oh, see, it is gone. How can God be gone? Falammar al qamara baadigan. And when he saw the shining rising moon, Kalahaga Rabbi, he said, okay, this is a bigger thing. It's very bright. Falamma afala, and it also said, Kala la in lam yahdani Rabbi la kunan namin al qamid baalin. He said, oh, had my Lord not directed me and guided me, I would have gone astray. I would have been from, from among these people who have gone astray. That is, he rejected moon also. Now when he says, when he saw the sun rising, Kalahaza Rabbi Haza Akbar. He said, oh, oh, yes, this is the biggest, the greatest. Maybe this is our Lord. Falamma فَلَمَّا أَفَلَتْ قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ إِنِّي بَرِيُّمْ مِمَّا تُشْرِكُونَ Then son also said, he said, O oh my nation, I declare my total rejection of all the shirk that you are making. إِنِّي وَجَّهْتُ وَجْهِيَ لِلَّذِي فَتَرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ حَنِيفًا I have turned my face to the one who created all the heavens and the earth. Hanifan! Purely, decidedly, in singular determination, I have turned my face towards him. Mamana min al mushrikeen. And I am not going to make any shirk. I am not going to make anything equal or partner to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will only worship the one who has created. I will worship that neither the stars nor the moon, nor for that purpose, or for that matter, the sun. I will worship. The one who created the stars and the moon and the sun. Wahajahu Kamuhu. Now his nation, his people disputed with him. They are good with him. Hajjahu. Hajja from Hujjah. Dali argument. They started arguing. Oh, what you are saying? Our forefathers were they fools? They, they, they didn't know anything, you think? حَجَّهُ قَوْمُهُ قَالَ تُحَجُّونِي فِي اللَّهِ وَقَدْ هَدَانِ He said, Are you disputing with me about Allah? And he has guided me. Now I can't go astray. وَلَا خَافُ مَا تُشْرِكُونَ بِهِ Behind this, you know, the background, they must have said, Okay now, you know, calamities will fall upon you. You have denied our gods, these gods will punish you. He said, وَلَا قَابُ مَا تُشْرِكُونَ بِهِ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ رَبِّي شَيَاءَ I have no fear of these deities whom you are making equal or partner to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ رَبِّي شَيَاءَ Except that my Lord decides something for me. If something unpleasant comes to me, it will be from my Lord. Not from this Lat or Uzza or other, you know, deities or your gods and goddesses. I don't fear them at all. My Lord embraces everything in His knowledge. Nothing is out of His knowledge. So, are you not reminded of these realities? How can I fear those whom you are declared to, to be equal and partners with Allah? And you are not fearing. That you have declared associates with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the most heinous crime. This is the biggest crime against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you are not fearing Allah. Yet you have committed shirk with Him. And you want to, you intimidate me. And you want to, that I should fear that there will be coming some punishment from these gods. أَنَّكُمْ أَشْرَكْتُمْ بِاللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ عَلَيْكُمْ سُلْطَانًا You are associating with Allah those for whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not sent down any authority. What does it mean? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in the Quran or in any revealed book that okay, I have adopted such and such as my son. You bow before him also. We would have bowed. Why not? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had asked us, commanded us, 
or okay i have taken him as a as a very close friend of mine as we have read but takhadallah ibrahim khalila i have taken him as 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 my friend personal friend so you worship him also had is so we would have done ma lam yunazzil bihi sultana do you have any proof for these gods in any revealed book no revealed book even those books which claim to be revealed whether they are revealed or not you will not find any shirk in them this shirk has been concocted afterwards you take to the gospels never at no place in the gospel you find trinity gospel according to saint matthew saint john according to saint luke all the four canonical gospels no way at trinity there you will find something you know in the letters of paul and so all these things can be found over there not in the gospels never even in hindu scriptures basic scriptures if you read upanishads i happen to read you know a translation of upanishads which was published by this government you know united states of america at some time they were very fearful of communism it is you know i am talking about a time about uh, 45 years ago when russia was a very big threat for this western you know society and system now at that time they were publishing the glorious quran they publish you know the translation of marmaduke pictal in millions and distribu- distributed it among the muslims throughout the world you read your books please and you 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 please keep away from communism at least in the same way you know gita upanishads very beautifully printed english translations i read them in upanishad you find the finest and purest form of tawhid no sir so actually these are the concoctions of the lower grades and ranks of clergy because they are professionals that becomes a profession with them and that they need some exploitation of the people well this is this is the temple of such and such devta so you have to come here and you have to you bring something you know and presents here and where do this where did that those presents go to them it was there you know wealth they were accumulating wealth you pay and you get a letter you know to Jib- to jibril that he is our friend let him go directly to the to the paradise and you have to pay something for that and these things have been happening in human history but kayf akhafu ma shaktum ما أشركتم ولا تخافون أنكم أشركتم بالله ما لم ينزل به سلطانا فأي الفريق أن يحق بالأمن إن كنتم تعلمون This is very important ayah of the Quran. Which of these two groups or parties is more entitled to peace? One party is Muhammadin who believe in one Allah alone, no smaller Allahs, no no Alaha, no gods and goddesses. no devis and devtas the only one and there are others who believe in the supreme god the hindus also believe that at the top is one parmatma is one mahadev is one under this parmatma and mahadev there are so many devis and devtas even in you know greece and rome they had god with capital g he was always one omnipotent omniscient omnipresent but underneath him there was a army of gods and goddesses innumerable gods and goddesses same was the case in arabia at the time of the prophet allah one but underneath there are so many aliha so now there is one party who believes only in one allah having all the authority and the party who believes in allah also and aliha also who will be more entitled to peace what does it mean inner contentment inner tranquility peace of mind can you serve many gods can you serve many masters 
a person who has to serve only one master. Will he be at peace? Or a person who has to serve so many masters? This peace, I have a small booklet, the Quran and the world peace. And this is one of the main, you know, basic ayat on which I have built that thesis. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking this question, Ayyul Farikani Ahakahu Bil Amnin Kuntum Talamun, if you know, give the reply. Now he himself is replying, Allazina Amanu wa Lam Yal Besu Imanahum Bi Zulmin, Ulaika Lahumul Am, Wahum Motadun. Those who believe, who have the real faith, and they don't mix up their Iman with any form of shirk, any form of zulm. Zulm, what is it? Shirk. Because we have in Surah Al-Luqman, Inna shirka la zulmun azim. So, Iman with complete tawheed. If you have this, Lam yalbisu imanahum bi zulmin, ulaika lahum al Because when this ayah was revealed, some of the companions of the Prophet came to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa radiyallahu ta'ala anhum, and they said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, who among us can be who doesn't do any wrong to anything, anybody, wrong to himself? They have not polluted their iman with any wrongdoing. Who can, you know, fulfill this criterion? The Prophet said, don't you read the ayah in Surah Al-Luqman? Here zulm means shirk. إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِذُهُ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ Maybe you are mistaken, maybe out of ignorance, you, are, you, are, you have committed something wrong and you have committed it against your own selves. Or you have done something wrong to somebody else, to your brother, to your neighbor, to anybody else. But you know this is something else. You will repent, turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you have polluted your iman with the slightest shirk, then there is going to be no pardoning. We read the, those words twice in Surah Al-Nisa. Inna la la yaghfiru yushraka bi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika li man yasha. This is unpardonable. It won't be pardoned. Short of that, these, you know, discrepancies, these mistakes, these sins, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pardon to whomsoever He likes. And such people will have the inner tranquility and amn and peace, inner peace, peace of mind, peace of heart. And only they are the people who are rightly guided. Now comes that ayah. I told you, this ayah says that actually this Hada Rabbi and Hada Rabbi and Hada Rabbi, it was only for sake of argument. Not that Ibrahim really believed in it. He was a prophet. And a prophet is innocent from the very birth. He could not ever have committed shirk. He could not have said to people that he, he could not believe in it. But he said to the people only an arg argument. But tilka hujjatuna atainaha Ibrahim ala qawmi. And this was our argument which gave, which we gave to Ibrahim against his nation. You know, you need some methodology to convince the people how to approach their minds. You have to talk to them at their own level of consciousness. So he started with it. Okay? You believe in the star? Oh yes, it's shining. It's very high. Maybe. It's just, you know, possible that it is the Lord. But then when it said, oh, we are not going to love those who sit. Step by step, he took his nation or people to this level. So it was actually for the sake of argument. We raise in ranks whomsoever we like. Now, Ibrahim. We, him we raised to a very high rank. وَاتَّخَذُ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا We have already read. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ حَكِيمٌ عَلِيمٌ Verily, your Lord, your Rabb, is all-knowing, all-wise. وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبُ 
And we gave him, Ibrahim, a son like Ishaq, and a grandson like Yaqub, Ullan Hadayna. And all of them, we, we guided them to the right path. Wanuhan Hadayna bin Qabl. And we had given the guidance to Nuh before him. Wamin Zurriyatihi. And from among his progeny, Dawood, Awa Sulaiman, Awa Ayyub, Awa Yusuf, Awa Musa, Awa Harun. Among the progeny of Ibrahim, we raised Dawood, and Sulaiman, and Ayyub, and Yusuf, and Musa, and Harun, alayhi salatu wa salam, wa kazadika najzil muhsineen. And this is how we give reward to those people who do good, who worship Allah in the best of the ways, in the most earnest ways. As I explained, Ihsan, the highest level, spiritual level, Islam, then Iman, then Ihsan. And this is how we recompense, we give the reward to those Muhsineen. But Zakaria, and not only them, but Zakaria, wa Yahya, wa Isa, wa Ilyasa, kullu min as-salihin. Among his progeny, we raised Zakaria, and Yahya, and Isa, wa Ilyas, and all were from the righteous people. Wa Ismail, wa Ilyasa, wa Yunus, wa Luta. As I told you, we, when we were reading Surah Nisa, at different intervals in Quran, we find, you know, these names of the prophets and messengers of Allah arranged as if flowers in a flower pot. So this is again another flower pot of the names of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many prophets named here? وَبَابْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ كُلَّنْ هَدَيْنَا وَنُوحًا هَدَيْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَتَهِ دَابُودَ وَسُلَيْمَانَ وَأَيُوبَ وَيُوسُفَ وَمُوسَ وَحَارُون Nine in one. And if you add Ibrahim, then they become ten. Then Zakaria, wa Yahya, wa Isa, wa Ilyas. Then Ismaila, wa Yasa, wa Yunusa, wa Luta, wa Kullan Faddalna ala al-Alameen. Now, it's about twelve, eleven, eleven, twelve, yes, twelve names of the Prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa min abayhim, wa zurriyatim, wa ikhwanihim. And each prophet had, you know, round him a circle of righteous people. If you are on the right path, you can hope that your progeny, your sons, maybe they are not prophets, but they will be, they will be on the right path. And this has been the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although there is possibility, someone may, may go wrong way. Out of four sons of Hazrat Anu, one was, you know, doomed. And he was drowned before his own eyes, before the eyes of the father. But three were with him on the right path. And it's very, you know, bad today that, you know, many of great ulama and big, you know, religious leaders, we find that out of their sons, none is going the way they used to go. This is a bad, a bad sign. This is just possible. If you have four sons, one doesn't take to your path, three should come. We have examples. Hazrat Ahmad Sarhandi Rahmatullahi Alayhi, he had four, and all the four were on the same path as the father. In the same way, Shah Wariullah Dehlavi Rahmatullahi Alayhi had four sons, and all the four were on that right path. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them. So in the same way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, around these prophets of Allah, there were their fathers, and their progeny, their sons and daughters, him and their brothers, Waqtabainahum. We all chosen, all of them. We, we like them. Wahadainahum ila salati mustaqeem. And then we guided them to the, to the straight path. Zalika hudallahi yahdi bihi manyesha. This is the guidance of Allah. He guides with it whomsoever he likes bin ibadihi among his servants. Wala washraku. Again, a stern warning. Had any one of them committed shark, shirk, shirk, all their good deeds would have gone in vain. As I told you, the biggest sum multiplied by zero becomes zero. Shirk is the big zero. You are praying, you are keeping fast, you are performing hajj, you are do doing Umrah every year, you are doing this, you are doing that, but you are doing some, for sure, some form of shirk also. All thing multiplied zero comes to zero. 
Now these are the people. Walau ashraku. Had they come in shirk. So how important it is to understand what is shirk. What are the different modes of shirk. Different shapes of shirk. Different forms of shirk. And I have a lecture on that, you know, a two hours lecture. To have an understanding, we must comprehend the shirk changes forms. Sometimes it is in the form of idol worship. Sometimes it becomes in the form of popular sovereignty. This is the biggest shirk of our days. Sovereignty. Materialism. We have all the faith in matter. Not the least in Allah who created the matter. All this faith on matter and that material means. This is now the very few among the Hindus also go to temples to worship these idols. Very few of them. Very few of them. You know, this disease of shirk has changed forms. And you must know, you must be able to recognize what form this disease has taken in our time. Very important. Had they committed shirk, all they had been doing good deeds would have come to a zero, would have vanished, and would have gone in vain. They are the people whom we gave the book. Now, this is the another word, hukm. We have been finding with book hikmah, atainahul hikmah, but here hukm, hukm means authority, because from among them were the rulers also. Daud, he was a king, Suleiman, he was a king, and most of the prophets of Bani Israel, they were actually the chiefs of their community. Kanat Bani Israel, tasusuhumul ambiya, kullama halaka nabiyun khalafahu nabiyun. So they are the people to whom we gave our book and then the authority and one nubuwa and the prophethood. And if these people, who are these? Haulai, O Muhammad, your nation, or those people who, who claim to believe in these prophets, if they are not evaluating these things as they should have done, and they are not grateful, and they are not accepting these things as they should have accepted. So we have assigned for this another nation who will not be unmindful, ungrateful for these things. What does it mean? You know, the people who believed in all these prophets, they are the Jews. They are now turning away their faces from this guidance. We have selected another nation. This nation is, is in the beginning. It is going to form. That is the Ummah of Muhammad Because this Surah is Makki. Actually, the declaration that now you have become an Ummah, that, that these ayat, they were revealed in Madani. Now you have, you have qualified that position. But now, up till this time, this Ummah was in the offing, as you call it. It was in offing. So we have, you know, we have designated this thing, this position, to another nation, and they will not be ungrateful. They are the people whom Allah had guided, all these prophets. So you also follow their guidance. Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Say to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I am not demanding from you any reward for what I am doing to you. I am conveying the message of Allah to you. I, have I ever de demanded from you any salary? <coughs> have I asked you for any contributions? Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I don't ask you any any reward for it. In who I love, zikra alilalamin. It is a reminding for the all of the worlds. I am a reminder. Anta muzakkir, fadakkir inna ma anta muzakkir. Lasta alehim bi musaytir. 
Go on reminding them. You are a reminder. وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ And they do not evaluate, value Allah as they ought to have valued Him. مَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ You know, our attitude and behavior depends upon the values which we assign to different things. How important it is to have a bigger house, although it might be on mortgage, but it is important to have a better house, big house. How important it is to have a bigger car. This is something value, and we are pursuing it. So everything, you know, value structure, that underlies our behavior. What values you have assigned to different things. Now, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stands highest in your priorities, His pleasure is the most valuable thing. For that, I am ready to sacrifice anything. Then you are a true moment. In the last tarabil al mu'minin an fusawwa wala hu bianna lahu al jannah. So actually, these words appear in the Quran many times. Ma qadarullah haqqa qadri. And the basic reason of shirk is that man fails to evaluate Allah as he should have and as he ought to have evaluated Him. Ma qadarullah haqqa qadri. Is qalu ma anzalullah ala basharim min shay. Now, one example of this is. When they said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never sent down on any human being anything. You claim that Quran is being sent down to you from Allah. No, Allah has never sent down on anything. And this actually was on the instigation of the Jews. Because till such time, you know, the news of the Prophet ﷺ had reached all the corners of the Arabian Peninsula. Now the Jews at Medina, they were perturbed. They were hoping that the last prophet will come from among them. Because for 2,000 long years, it was their, you know, their proprietorship. So to, so to say, that all the prophets were coming, you know, in Bari Israel. Books were given to them. Torah, Zabur, Injil. So they were hoping that the last prophet also will be raised from among them. So they were perturbed. When they listened, you know, the news were coming. There is a person in, in, in Mecca who claims to be prophet. So actually, so they, were, they were trying to preempt, you know. And in that, you know, they were trying to misguide the people of Mecca. No, no, no. Allah has not, never sent, you know. Because maybe there are some people of Mecca. They might have approached some of the learned people from among the Jews. What, what is your opinion? We have a man who says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending down to him his book. Oh, no, 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 nothing of this sort. Is Qalu Manzal Allah Wala Bashar Min Shay. Allah has never sent down anything on any human being. Qul Man Anzal Al Kitab Al Ladi Jabi Musa. You know, in the same coin, reply in the same coin. Qul Man Anzal Al Kitab Al Ladi Jabi Musa. Who sent down the book which Musa brought? You claim that a book was brought by Musa a.s. Who sent it down? If Allah has not sent down anything on any human being, who sent down the book which Musa brought? Nuram wa hudal dinnas. It was a light and a guidance for humanity. You have put it in different, on different sheets, different parchments. Not one book like this, in parts, separately, so that whenever there is need, you show one part, and you can hide the other part. Because in Quran also you have it, that there is one ayah, la taqrabu salata, vantum sukara. If you don't read vantum sukara, la taqrabu salata, don't go near prayer, okay? I am not praying. So in this same way, there can be so many things, if you hide one thing. And you, you show only part of it. Tugduna hawa tukfuna kasira. You take it out and for, for the people, show it to the people, and also you are hiding much of it. Tajaluna hu karatisa. 
you have turned it into parchments and separate sheets, and you hide much thereof. Some of it you show out. وَعُلِّمْتُمْ مَا لَمْ تَكُونُوا مَا لَمْ تَعْلَمُوا أَنْتُمْ وَلَا أَبَعَوْكُمْ And they were, you were taught what your forefathers didn't knew. Torah came to you. And because before Torah, several hundred years passed, when they had no book, they were Bani Israel, they were the progeny of Hadrat Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam, they were twelve tribes from the twelve sons of Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam, but they had no book. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first book that Allah sent down was Torah. Qul Allah, say to them, Allah sent that Torah, but it implies the same Allah has sent Quran to me. So mazarhum fi khodim yalabun. Then you just leave them alone, plunging into the vain discourses of theirs. Now don't enter into further argument, leave them. وَهَذَا كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ مُبَارَكٌ مُصَدِّقُ مُصَدِّقُ الَّذِي بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ وَلِتُنْدِرَ أُمَّ الْقُرَى وَمَنْ هَوْلَهَا And now this is the book that we have sent down. وَهَذَا مُبَارَكٌ After Torah, this is the book. Actually the book, Al-Kitab, is only Torah and Quran. Because in Zabur, there is no law. It is only Psalms. Hamd, songs of, hymns of Hamd, Psalms. In Injil, it is only Hikmah, no law. Because Hazrat Masih said, this law of Moses will remain applicable to you also. Don't think I have come to destroy law. So the law was law of Moses, and after that, law of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Shara'i, they are two only. وَهَذَا كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْ لَا مُبَارَكٌ After that book of law, now this book has been sent down. مُبَارَكٌ What is مُبَارَك? بَرَكَ means, you know, to bring out something which is inherent, some good, inherent in something, but it needs some stimulation. مَا مُبَارَكَ Rain. It comes down on the earth. All the things is, are there in the earth. The seeds are lying there. All the vegetation potentiality is in the earth, not in the water. Water only initiates the process. So it brings out the treasures that are already hidden in the earth. In the same way, there is a treasure hidden in us. That is our soul, our spirit. So now, but this is lying dormant. Quran comes and activates it. Brings it out. So Quran has a kitab mubarakun. Just as ma'am mubaraka. The water of rain falling on the land, on the earth, bringing out its prayers, its vegetation. In the same way, this Quran, it, it permeates into your souls, activates it, and brings out the good that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already put in it potentially. وَهَذَا كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْ لَهُ مُبَارَكُ الْمُصَدِّقُ الَّذِي بَنَا يَدَيْهِ And this confirms that which was present before it. It confirms, as we have read in Surah Al-Ma'idah, إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَا تَوْرَاهِ فِيهَا هُدَمْ وَنُورِ Again in Jeel, فِيهَا هُدَمْ وَنُورِ So Allah doesn't say that Torah is not, was not given to Moses or, or the Bani Israel for that matter. In Jeel was nothing, never given to, to, to Jesus alayhi salatu wa salam, no. These were the books Allah sent down. وَهَذَا كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْ لَهُ مُبَارَكُ الْمُصَدِّقُ الَّذِي بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ وَلِتُنْزِرَ أُمَّ الْقُرَى وَمَنْ حَوْلَهَا Very important. أُمَّ الْقُرَى The mother of the towns. قَرْيَة is a town, a township. And قُرَى is the plural. أُمَّ الْقُرَى The mother. Now what is, what does it mean? In every country there is some central city controlling the whole of the country. That becomes the Ummul Qura for that particular land, for that particular country. The Ummul Qura in Arabia was Mecca. It was dominant, controlling the religious activity, the, the, so to say the political activity, the economic activity was all being controlled by Mecca. So Ummul Qura. But now this Ummul Qura has Man Hawlaha and whosoever surrounds it. Now this, you know, it can go to surround, immediate surroundings, a few hundred miles round the, the city of Makkah, 
if you go a circle is more wider a thousand miles long circle then you know maybe the whole of the world can be included ma hawlaha whole of the earth can be included in it. but to begin with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was only warning and conveying the message of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to people of makkah then you know the surrounding people the tribes which were living in the vicinity of makkah and then it was you know extending and progressing forward and forward so these words can include everything waman hawlaha because you know any point on the earth can be said to be the center of the earth because it's something round and he places the center of the earth so actually this is a very good explanation le tunzira umm al qura wa man hawlaha so that you warn the people who are dwelling in that mother of the towns in the arabian peninsula also people who are dwelling around it wal ladina yu'minuna bil akhirati yu'minuna bihi so this is very important quran tells that the most important iman is the iman bil akhirah whosoever has some idea of resurrection that i will have to return to my lord he will listen to you attentively he will have some initial taqwa in his in his heart and mind and soul and then if you know the dawa of the prophet comes before him he will accept it so the words are wal ladina yu'minuna bil akhirati yu'minuna bihi those who have some idea of akhirah will believe in this book quran although you know they didn't know the prophethood all the people of bakka because this institution was known to the bani israel to the jews they knew they were the people of the book they believed in so many prophets but in the second you know the, the line of progeny of ibrahim alaihi salatu wassalam from ismail after ismail there was no prophet till muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam very big gap so they were not what familiar with what a prophet is and what is the messengerhood of allah subhanahu wa taala but if they had any idea of akhirah then they will listen to it and they will believe in it wal ladina yu'minuna bil akhirati yu'minuna bihi wa hum ala salatihim yuhafizun and they protect and they keep a watch over their salah you know this salah also continued among the progeny of ibrahim alaihi salatu wassalam they were circle uh, ambulating round the kaaba they were doing tawaf they were doing hajj although they had added something wrong to these things and they had changed the conditions bidaat innovations now is in this ummah allah subhanahu wa taala has protected this ummah and he has been sending mujaddidin who renewed the original deen all the original forms and you know all these bidaat innovations they were cleared off after every 100 years in every century people have been coming otherwise you know the innovations and the the bidaat they might have reached to a such a level that the real the, educ- the real deen would have gone absolutely out of sight and the same had happened there we come to know that some uh, african countries they celebrate you know the day of the birth of the prophet with music in the mosques they are having music and they are celebrating the birth of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam birthday of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but actually because this is the last ummah ana akhirul rusul wa antum akhirul umam the prophet said i am the last messenger and you are the last community last ummah so it had to be preserved otherwise you know things would have taken you know a very different form and shape and that happened to the people of ibrahim this was the progeny of ibrahim living at makka and around it but you they believed in ibrahim and they said they they were very proud of him that we are we are the progeny of ibrahim but they had changed you know the deen of ibrahim absolutely but still you know some of the relics were there fa hum ala salatihim yuhafizun so whosoever is mindful of allah that allah is there whosoever has any idea of resurrection of akhirah he will definitely believe in quran so this is the meaning of the ayah wa hadha kitabun anzalnahu mubarakun musaddiqul ladhi bayna yadayhi wa litunzira umma alqura wa man hawlaha wal ladhina yu'minuna bil akhirati yu'minuna bihi wa hum ala salatihim yuhafizun 
and it can also mean that whosoever believes in this Quran, he will be very much watchful about his prayers. He will keep his prayers established. وَمَنْ أَزْلَمُ مِنْ مَنْ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا And who is more evil doer than that, who concocts a false thing and attributes it to Allah. كَذَبَ عَلَى اللَّهِ You have concocted something, you have framed some false idea, and then you attribute it to Allah. That Allah has said so. So this is the biggest crime. Or you are not the prophet, revelation has not come to you, and you say that prophet, the revelation is coming to me. Both meanings are included. وَمَنْ أَزْنَمُ مِنْ مَنِ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا أَوْ قَالَ أُوْهِيَ إِلَيَّ وَلَمْ يُوْهَ إِلَيْهِ شَيْءٍ Or he claims that revelation has come to him, although no revelation was sent to him. وَمَنْ قَالَ فَأُنْزُلُ مِسْلَ مَا أَنْزُلَ اللَّهِ And then there were other arrogant type of people in Arabia, in, in Mecca, who said, oh, what is it, Quran? I can also compose, you know, some composition like Quran. But when the challenge was thrown to them, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبِ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَاتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّنْ مِسْلِهِ Nobody could dare. But they could, they could say, oh, nothing. We can also compose, we can also send down the same as Quran, according to Muhammad, is being sent down to him. فَأُنْزُلَ مِسْلَمَا عَنْزُلَ اللَّهِ وَلَوْ تَرَا عِزِ الظَّالِمُونَ فِي غَمَرَاتِ الْمَوْتِ And only if you could see when these evil doers will be in the pangs of death, in the agonies of death, when they will be dying, they are arrogant, they are haughty, they are proud. They are, you know, pronouncing and saying these pro blasphemies with, without any fear of Allah. But the time will come. وَلَوْ تَرَا عِذِ الظَّالِمُونَ فِي غَمَرَاتِ الْمَوْتِ When they will be having and experiencing the agonies and pangs of death. وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ بَاسَتُ وَيَدِيهِمْ And the angels will be extending their hands, arms, أَخْرِجُوا أَلْفُسَكُمْ Give up your souls. Give out your life. الْيَوْمَ تُجْزَوْنَ عَذَابَ الْحُونِ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَقُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ غَيْرَ الْحَقِّ this day you will be recompensed with a punishment which is humiliating. Because of what you had been saying and attributing to Allah, which was false. And you had been the arrogant and you were showing arrogance against his revelations. And then on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, وَلَقَدْ يَتُمُونَا فُرَادَ You have come to us today alone. Where are your servants? Where are your slaves? Where's all your money and your palaces? You left everything back. Come alone. وَلَقَدْ يَتُمُونَا فُرَادَ the big mansion, the big villa that you built, you left it. Kama khalaqnaakum awwala marra. As we had created you for the first time. You know, here we have relations. He is my brother, he is my helper. This is my nation. But you know, when Allah created us in souls only, there was no relationship, no father, no son. The souls of all human beings present at one time. The soul of Adam and the soul of the last man who will be born in this world till the doomsday. So there was no relationship. All these relationships, you know, they have taken place in this world of matter, here. Here, we are attached to different peoples. At that time, we were not. And in the Akhra also, we will be alone. Nobody will be able to help us. You have come to us alone. And you have left on behind you whatever we bestowed upon you. And how come we are not seeing along with you your associate gods whom you had taught that they are the partners of Allah in your matters. They will also have some say. They will be able to save us. How come? They are not visible. Where are they? They, are not, they have not come with you. 
anybody who has to intercede must come with the you know with the person anybody who wants to some make some recommendation is he has to accompany him wa ma lakum wa ma nara maakum shufaakum alladhina zaamtum annakum annahum feekum shuraka qad taqatta bainakum all relationships among you have been broken wa dalla ankum ma kuntum tazmun and all that you had fabricated that has vanished that has gone in vain gone with the wind in allah faliqul habb wal nawa verily it is allah who splits the grain and the dead stone and you just sow a seed a grain then it splits into two a leaf comes out of it or two who is doing it it is happening by your own soul no allah is doing it in allah faliqul habb wal nawa يخرج الحي من الميت ومخرج الميت من الحي he brings out the living from the dead this dead stone is dead is there any sign of life in it from this is appearing you know those leaves and now they are taking the form of a dead palm so living matter had come out from the dead in the same way he can bring out the dead he will bring out the dead from the living ذَلِكُمُ اللَّهُ Such is Allah. This is the attribute of Allah. فَأَنَّا تُوفَقُونَ So whence are you being deviated? Can't you reach here? You must reach the logical conclusion. فَالِقُ الْإِسْمَاحُ And he is the cleaver of the dawns. You know the sheet of darkness broken. and you know the rays coming out the dawn the white thread of dawn who is doing it faliqul isba wa ja'ala al-layla sakanan wa ash-shams wal qamara husbana he has made the night for you for resting and he has made the sun and the moon for your calculations your calculating time the serial time in philosophy they say there are two types of time the absolute time ad-dar inna dhara huwa allah there is the hadith la tasubbu ad-dar fa inna dhara huwa allah never abuse dhar because what you attribute to dhar is actually the decision and command of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dhar and asr asr is this real time passing time so now this passing time we have to measure so this sun how much sun this said, this tells us that half of the day has passed because the sun is right on our top it has gone here so three fourth of the day has passed and you know the, the 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 moon it tells you how many days of the month have passed so actually these are the their calculation measures for the time wa shams wal qamar husbana zalika taqdeer al aziz al alim and this is the ordaining of of allah of the of the person you may call al aziz al alim who is al aziz all powerful having all authority and who has all the knowledge he has ordained all these things in this form barakallahu li wa lakum fil qur'an al azim wa nafani wa iyyakum bil ayat wa zikr al hakim allah akbar The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, iman in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. 
The first and foremost objective of establishing IONA is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about IONA, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at t-a-n-z-e-e-m dot u-s or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.